discuss some of the things that are necessary for you as parents to prepare for this school year because we really want it to be the best school year ever. Amen. But you have to prepare yourself and then you have to prepare your kids. And as Pastor, Pastor Dean said, you may not have any kids in school, but I'm sure you have coworkers and family members who could glean from this information that we're giving you tonight. Um, we're living in the last days, as you all know, and as my favorite phrase is, Maranatha, come quickly, Lord Jesus. <laughs> but until he comes, he warns us through the word of God exactly what we're dealing with Amen. in this day and age. And as you know, it's getting darker and darker. And so one of the scriptures that he really tells us what is happening and what was going to happen and is happening right now because we are in the last days is found in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 5. And you can look on the screen. And I'm going to read it from King James. And it says, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, uh, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away." Ooh. So you can see that in these last days, we're going to have children who are disobedient to parents, to name a few, and they are people as a whole are going to be lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God. You know, it really is, it's a jungle out there. <laughs> and darkness uh, prevails more and more. But I have good news for you. As Amen. parents, don't fear. Do not fear. Do not fear, because when you raise your children according to the word of God, when you teach them the principles in the word of God, they will be able to resist the peer pressure. They will be able to resist the things of the world that are designed by the enemy to suck them into the world and doing all the things that we know are incorrect because the enemy is out there and he comes to steal, kill and destroy. So we have to we have to purpose as parents to focus on living a godly life. Mm -hmm. As as members of the household of faith, the word of God tells us exactly the way to act, exactly the way to dress, exactly the way to to uh, speak and as pastor has been telling us about for several months on Legos, correcting our our verbiage the, the word of God has the answer for every issue Amen. that you can have as a parent. But we've got to get in the word and continually apply it to our lives. Now, Proverbs 22, 6, which is a very familiar scripture to all of you as parents, says, train up a child in the way they should go, and when they're old, they will not depart from it. Well, this training is spiritual, it's social, it's physical, and it's also emotional training that we as parents are Amen. supposed to train these precious little dumplings in uh, so that they can be the overcomer that we want them to be. Um, so, so please, I want to encourage you, don't confess this is hard. It's so hard to raise these kids. No, it's not hard because you have the greatest helpers. You have the Word of God and the Spirit of God who Amen. knows those children. So you have to understand that, that God gave you those precious children. And as a result of that, He has graced you to train them and to teach them right. and to show them what to do. The Passion translation of this verse in Proverbs 22, 6 is a little bit different, and I like it. This is what it says. Dedicate, this is talking to parents, dedicate your children to God and point them in the way that they should go. And the values they've learned from you will be with them for life. You see, it's your responsibility to train them, to teach them in the correct values because really your voice is the loudest Amen. voice in their head. Absolutely. And you need to continue as they grow, as they go into junior high and high school, you need to make sure that your voice is the loudest voice in their head. Amen. 
but you train them by example, just like the scripture says. You put values in them that they will have for the rest of their life. So you are the role model. You see, many of us in this room didn't have good role models. And so we know what happened with us and what we did, some of us who didn't do the right thing. But I'm telling you, with the word of God, you can be the correct role model. And so what you have to do is you have to determine yourself first. First and foremost, honey, uh, spouse, we are going to live according to this. Amen. We are going to put these principles to work in our life, in our marriage, in our relationship, and then we are going to teach them to our children. And then you tell your children, this is how we're going to live. Now, the world doesn't live this way, but we are going to live by this. That's right. Amen. Amen. You know, I always, uh, I always try and uh, uh, help us out when we, when we get to this particular verse, uh, because oftentimes uh, uh, many experience uh, their children uh, doing some things that uh, uh, actually don't follow some of the training that they had. And um, obviously that's not a pleasant thing to deal with. But as parents... You're only responsible uh, for for what you do, what you do when you know what to do, and when you do begin to know what's correct, that's when you begin to do what's correct. Uh, but be sure that your children reach an age where they're going to make a decision whether they're going to buy into the relationship with the father and the way he wants them to live. They're going to make that decision. Now, I believe it is a guarantee. Because I don't believe God does plan B through Z. I believe everything he desires is, is to be exactly the way his word declares it. But you cannot, you cannot take on what your children do. You can't take that on. Once they get old enough, especially if, if your children have been raised in this house and they have heard it. Uh, week after week after week, they've seen it modeled. They've heard it taught. You, your assignment is to, is to back that up with not only your own personal behavior and attitude, but to continue to encourage them in that way. But they're going to make their own decisions. Have, have you found that out? And and they, they, don't, they don't have to be very old to really start making some decisions. And so the only thing I want to be sure that parents don't do is I want you to do what you know to do. But I don't want you to take on the responsibility if they don't do what they know to do. Listen, think about it this way. Some water and some plant, but God brings the increase. And the only place he can bring increase is where somebody is devoted to grow. So what we're going to do, we're going to do everything we know to do to teach, to instruct the children, to expose ourselves as adults to the things that we need to do, the changes we need to make to be better examples. We need to trust God, believe God. We need to walk in faith, expecting those children to follow after the things of God. And what we want to do is we want to be sure that we've got our I's dotted and our T's crossed so that we will not be the excuse, but we will be the ones that continue to encourage them. So don't, don't take on what looks like a failure. Just continue to trust God. Amen. We want to move into uh, uh, three different P's, or three different priorities. Uh, and we want to begin with uh, uh, priority number one, to refuse pressure, because pressure affects your priorities. We want to talk about pressure. And uh, um, PK has talked about it. We talk about it all the time. We live in a world packed with pressure. Uh, the school systems, the world system, period, is packed with pressure. Those of you that are out in the work world, there is 
lots and lots of pressure. But the thing is, we have been graced to do, to do what God has called us to do. If you've got children, you've been graced to raise those children. And the pressure, the pressure that they, that they are put under uh, can, can really be uh, alleviated to a great degree by how you handle the pressure. Because you have to be the one that encourages them and strengthens them to do things the way they need to do it. In John 16, Jesus said, These things have I spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. See, in him is the only place there is peace. I don't care if all hell breaks loose. Only in him is peace. That in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, which simply means pressure. There's pressure in this world. But he said, be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. You know, that right there would make a good confession. Right. You recognize what's coming against you, but you just say, hey, listen, listen. Uh, Jesus has o- already overcome this. And you're talking to yourself in the mirror. Yeah, this is a bad situation. This is a hard situation. This is difficult maybe. But Jesus has already overcome come this issue. Anything negative, anything that has to do with stealing, killing, or destroying, he's already overcome it. And you need to see yourself as, as, uh, as an overcomer in, in that area. Uh, another thing that you need to be concerned about as far as uh, uh, is pressure uh, are, are some of the things that uh, the world tries to do. It tries to put you and your kids in a box. It tries to tell your children what to do in order to be acceptable. You've got to get to the point where your desire is that they be acceptable and that they honor God in all they do. Your assignment is to see that they get strong enough in an understanding of His love and devotion to them that they're not bullied around by anyone, that they understand how to handle that and they understand how to handle it without getting angry and upset. Listen, when, when, your children, when your children are bullied, you know what I used to do? I used to do, you know, I was, uh, you know, I was pretty pudgy as a kid. And I was pretty pudgy as an adult once, too. But uh, I was pretty pudgy. And the kids, had, uh, they'd... Uh, Does that mean fat? Yeah, well, that's, well I, I, was, I was, you know, I, you know, I think there's a difference between... <laughs> Pudgy's closer to fat than, than it is to skinny. But anyway, they, you know, they'd say, you know, you're, you're, shit, you're, you're sure getting fat, aren't you? And I said, thanks, man. I didn't, I didn't know if you'd notice. You're not turn- you know, if you, don't, if you don't get defensive, if your children don't get defensive when somebody says something ugly about them, hmm? they don't get defensive. They say, oh, thank you very much. You can disarm them. Huh? You don't have to say, I'm going to get my dad. He's going to kick your dad's. No, you <laughs> No, that's not the way you settle the issue. You have them. I mean, they are who they are. They are who they are. They're the size they are. And, you know, you may not be happy with the size. They may not be happy with the size. But the thing about it is they do not want to succumb to bullying because that's the kind of thing that can set them into depression and into areas that keep them from studying, learning, and doing the things that not only they need to do academically, but they need to do spiritually. The best thing to do is just to let them know that God loves them right now, pudgy or bony. You know, you might just teach them, say somebody say something ugly about them, said, you know, I'm so excited that God loves me. Most kids will turn around and walk right off. Hmm? But the thing is, is they don't need to become defensive. Amen. Well, the thing about it is, and what I tell your children is, um, they can have their opinion, but God's opinion is the one that matters. Amen. And when you, as parents, have this on the inside of you, that greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. Yeah. And then you teach that to your kids to do what Ephesians 6.10 says and be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Then, you know, it's basically saying your kids have it on the inside. They've got the word of God. They've got the spirit of God. And I tell them, just tell them, talk to the hand. You know, I'm not going to listen to you. 
That's an old deal, but it's still a good one, you know? A ver, mira. God loves me. ¿Qué, qué? God loves me and he thinks I'm good stuff. Amen. And so you have to instill that into your kids and yourself. Yeah. And you can't get butthurt when somebody makes a comment to you. You have to be the example and, and not allow the world to put them in that box that they have to dress a certain way, they have to talk a certain way, they have to act a certain way, they have to be a certain way. No, I tell the kids, we are different. We are different. We live our life according to the word of God. And yes, it is, it is different. It is different, but God is on our side <laughs> and God is on the inside of us and he will help us be strong. Amen. Well, so we don't give in to that. There's pressure from parents. I know our parents put pressure on us. You know, my mom watched soap operas. She was one of those people that got so totally involved in the soap operas. and Those and, are like novelas? I guess. Yeah. Those novelas, yeah. But, no. but anyway, when I told her my Come girls on, were not going to watch soap operas with her, you know, I had some pressure. I had some resistance there. I told her to forget it. And she said, well, you watch soap operas. Well, yeah, I watched that garbage, but I didn't know better. Now I know better, and I'm not going to expose my kids to that. So there was pressure from parents, pressure with respect to trick-or-treating. You went trick-or-treating. Let your kids go trick-or-treating. No, I'm not going to. You believed in Santa Claus. Let your kids believe in Santa Claus. No, I'm not going to lie to them. Because, see, the thing about it is, parents, what do we hate most when our kids lie to us, it, when our kids do something to us, and that's lie? We hate, hate it when they lie. And then we raise them up lying to them. This fat man with the costume is going to come down the Sorry, chimney, he's not chubby, and he's, he's going to give you presents. I never lied to my kids, and I don't think that's right. So I got pressure from, from my parents, from, from Dean's parents, on the way we believed in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. We got pressure from friends. Oh, you're too strict on your kids. You, you shouldn't So wait a minute that. now. Whose kids are those? Yeah. Oh, really? they're our kids. Oh, thank you very much. But, but, you know, guys, you have to stand up for right and truth, and you have to say, I'm going to do it. But this has to be a family um, uh, agreement. We're going to do it according to the word of God. And so, Mama, you might be offended, but this is my life, and these are my kids, and I'm going to stand before God That's right. responsible for them, not you. So family will put pressure on you, and friends will put pressure on you, but the greater one is in you. Absolutely. Amen? Absolutely. You know, the most important thing you can do is expose yourself and your kids to the Word of God yeah. on a daily basis. A daily you know, basis. we have the PFS for adults, but we also have Bible reading for the youth. We have Bible reading for the kids that they're to read every day. This is the most important thing that they get on the inside of them because this will endure forever. And it's important for you to also make these confessions over them. That um, if you have not received the parents' edition, we pass this out. If you're a parent, we passed this out yesterday when we prayed for your kids. But if you want a parents' edition, um, would you just raise your hand and our ushers will, will give them out if you don't have them. What it has on the front is some verbiage that I've put on there. But on the back is the confessions that, that you can make every day over your kids. And you know, sometimes you don't feel like uh, they are the greatest thing since peanut butter. <laughs> but if you will say what God's word says about them, it will help you have a good attitude with respect to them. And we also have, I created the students edition for the kids and I think they're on the, the table in, in, in the foyer. But it's so important that you train these kids to say what God says about them. Because then it gets down on the inside of them. They know that they know that they know that they have the mind of Christ. They have the peace of God. Kids are all just a basket case. But once they've got the word of God on the inside of them, they have something to defend against the things that are coming at them at Amen. school. You know, another thing that, uh, that you want to be sure 
And parents, have, you have everything to do with this. And I, know, I don't know, some of you are frustrated because you never played soccer or, uh, you know, because you never got picked, you know, to play softball on the playground or whatever. But don't, don't force your children into extracurriculars. Yeah. Yeah. Just don't do that, you know. Uh, uh, obviously, you know, if they are athletic, you'll know that. Uh, if they want to play athletics, then, then that's fine. But don't, don't push your children in to do that because you think that's going to make them a stronger boy or a, or a prettier girl or whatever. Why, why don't you let them do something radical and, and find their place and their gifting uh, from the father and not feel bad because they don't play for the Eagles or, or they don't play soccer at 7 o'clock in the morning on Saturday? You know, they really don't want to do that anyway, you know? <laughs> huh? Honestly, you know. No kid in their right mind wants to get up at 7 o'clock to run around and kick a ball. I mean, you know, I know that many people see that as a tremendous sport, but give me a rest. Don't force your children. And your little darling, she doesn't have to, she doesn't have to be a great dancer. I mean, how long does that last? I know you're running them back and forth. I mean, you're doing a taxi service, getting those kids to dance class. And as soon as they've graduated from high school... They don't dance anymore. Huh? I mean, especially, you know, Michelic deals and all that. That's, so what is that? I mean, you've got some extra pictures for your album. Your children would be better off spending quality time with you and, and learning their value and how much, how much and how great they can be uh, in the kingdom of God as opposed to being out there, you know, with the best smile or the best dance or the best whatever. Amen. All those trophies are going to burn. Huh? I mean, if they're super athletic, believe me, and you've trained them to hear God's voice, then they'll move right up the ranks. And you won't have to push them. You won't have to push them. Let the children learn about God's direction before you force them into a position. And if the kids talk to them about them, well, you know, you're a, you know, I, I guess back in the day, you know, we were either, uh, we either, either jocks or, or nerds or whatever. I don't even know what they call us. I was never that. I was a, I was a, you know, but I was worthless. What were you? Well, I was a jock. Oh. I was a jock, but, I you know. I thought you said you were a jerk. <laughs> well. <laughs> That too. Uh, you know, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I had double J covered. I was a jerk and a jock. Number two, we only got so much time. Relax. Number two is uh, uh, pre choice choices. Pre choice. That means you got to plan ahead. Amen. Kids don't know what to do when they're pressured into do it and they've never had any training as to what to say. Uh, this is something that. Uh, 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 as PK has already said, you have to do as a family. You have to make a decision. Look, these are, these are our parameters. These are our boundaries. These are ours as adults. So this puts you on the, you know, this is why a lot of adults don't particularly like this kind of service, you know, because they think, oh, God, I don't, you know, I mean, you know. But they're your children. As our girls told us, you had unprotected sex, so you're going to have to take care of this. And we did, and they are, and so they became our responsibility. They were a gift from God. Now, if that's too much for you, then uh, change the way you think. Amen. Uh, so uh, recently, uh, uh, recently uh, uh, someone had asked James Dobson, Dr. James Dobson, some of you have heard of him, I'm sure, and the rest of you obviously haven't. Uh, Dr. Dobson's a great, uh, uh, a great uh, uh, motivator for child raising and uh, has, a great, uh, uh, has a great ministry to do that. And somebody asked him recently, uh, uh, you know, how, how early should I give my child a cell phone? And he said, hey, listen, you know, uh, uh, as soon as you want them to watch porn. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, as soon as you want them to watch porn. I found out an interesting statistic today that there are 300,000 porn sites on the web. Holy Toledo. 300,000. Be hard to miss those, wouldn't it? I yeah. thought it was just the pennies catalog. You're dating yourself. Huh? You're dating yourself. Well, I mean right now. I mean the, 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 the pennies flyers today, you know, 
just in their bras and thongs, you know, <laughs> or, or the way the Playboys used to be in the 60s. I mean, you know, they had a fold out, that obviously, but I mean, this is a new world now. <laughs> this is new world. And if I understand, hear any of you involved in it, I got some really big guys in this house that are going to come and see you at night <laughs> and just club the mess out of you. And I've got some girls that are pretty strong too, so, you know, don't, don't think I don't know that women jack with porn also. Yes. Let me go ahead and say one more thing since we're going to have to go several hours long tonight, it looks like. <laughs> You start messing with that stuff. The life that the Father has designed for you sexually will never manifest. You dabble with that stuff long enough, and you will be jacked up sexually. You will never enjoy sexual intimacy with your wife the way God designed it to be because you've twisted yourself out of shape by watching that stuff. That's all I got to say about that. The last thing you want is your children to be involved in that devilish, perverse world as a young child. Because I can assure you, if you're not able to deal with it as an adult, they sure can't deal with it as a child. So if you're going to have phones in your kids' hands, and I know kids today, it's bizarre. I don't know what all they can do on those phones. But I know if they're going to have one, you need to get a thing called covenant eyes. You need to check their phone daily. We don't trust those little blessings. We're... <laughs> We're going to check their phone daily. We're going to be sure because we don't want them taken out because of our unwillingness to steward what God has given us. You need to make a determination. You need to make pre-choice choices. The sexual things you need to talk about. Now, PK talks about it early. She don't play. She don't play. Those little kids are sitting there six years old or seven years old. <laughs> she says fornication. They think it's, uh, uh, what, is that? what did they say it was, the one? Uh, what, is, what is cornific? Pornography. Was Corn oh, it was about pornography. Was talking about pornography. Talking about pornography. And, and somebody went home and, and Pastor Kathy was talking about what is pornography? <laughs> and the mom said, you'll have to ask her. Yeah, I'm sure her mom knew what pornography was, but she may not have known what pornography is. She, well, she didn't want to discuss she it. She didn't want to child. discuss it. Same, same thing with fornication. We don't have any problem talking about that. And obviously, most people won't have much trouble being involved in it. So we don't mind talking about what other people are doing. You know what I'm saying? And so you need to know that your children need to be led in such a way that they don't put themselves or you don't allow them to be in a position where, they're, where, they're, uh, uh, where their purity will be compromised. I mean, do your kids a favor. You know, I know recently, boy, oh golly, uh, recently there was, uh, uh, I heard of a, of a young girl that had lived, uh, that, that her whole high school uh, uh, time in high school, she was pure. But she was, she was uh, getting ready to go to college, and uh, uh, she, she didn't want to go to college as a virgin. So she had a friend, and they just had sex just to have it, like it was a freaking latte. Now, don't, you don't, I mean, you're all looking at me like, what? Well, isn't that kind of the way it is? Yeah, that's the way it is today, isn't it? Huh? I mean, that's the way it is. Like, it's just, you know, you know, and I'm so grateful. I mean, I'm so grateful. Mean, I was plenty perverted, but if it had been like this, phew, I'd have never, I'd have never made it. But, but today, it it's, is, like, it's like it's nothing. You have to tell your children. Yeah. You have to tell your ch children the facts of life. Don't rely on somebody else or their friends or that's the right. world to tell them. 
And, and we know of resources that will help you at every age level to explain this to them. Don't be afraid and say, oh, well, they already know, like my mother did. And I'm going, no, I don't know. <laughs> Why don't you tell me, mother? But she didn't want to tell me. And so it's important that you instruct your kids in the right way because they've seen a lot of bad stuff in the world on other kids' phones. And you have to instruct them too. Right. Like, you guard your eye gates and your ear gates. You don't, you don't dwell on that stuff. And so when they take a stand and they determine that, no, I'm not going to do that, then, of course, the kids at school are going to make fun of them. They're going to call them names. But I'm telling you, when you've instructed your children in the way they should go, then they're not going to give in to that. Yeah. See, peer pressure is horrible in the schools. But we want them to have positive peer pressure. Amen. Like, I know who I am in Christ Jesus. Exactly. I don't care if I am pudgy. I am going to be a virgin when I get married. There are just more of me to know who I am. Hey Amen. You got to turn Whatever. it. You got to turn it around. You got to. You, you know, just like the enemy. You know, when the enemy comes out of you, you thought, "Say, devil, what are you thinking, huh? You loser. Do you do you know where you're going to hell forever? You were you, you were you were the anointed cherub, you idiot, and you tried to exalt yourself, and you're coming to get me. No, listen. No, I'm going to, you got to train your children to be strong and to say what needs to be said in such a way that they feel exactly about themselves that God does, because he doesn't. God is never going to bully anybody, even if they're pudgy. He's not going to bully anybody. He's going to keep telling them how much he loves them, praise God. Amen. Because it's his goodness and his love that creates that desire to make a change. And every one of them, even the children, have to, have to make a decision to do that. The, the friends, Mom, do you want to talk about that for a moment? You've got 38 seconds. Okay. <laughs> you need to monitor 26. their friends. You okay. need to monitor their friends. And if you're not, you need to make some adjustments because you become who your friends are. 1 Corinthians 15.33 says, evil communication corrupts good manners. So you know as well as I do, you hang around those guys that drink beer and smoke pot, then you're going to drink beer and smoke pot. Well, the same thing happens to your kids. So you have to guard your friends, and you have to make sure that they're hanging around with the right friends, Amen. godly friends. So you pray for them to have a godly friend. We spent two months in kids' church going over the criteria. What is a godly friend? And how to be a godly friend and how to find a godly friend. And so it would behoove you to go ahead and listen to those lessons in kids' church because it would help you understand how to have godly friends. I'm telling you, how many of us had our first drink or alcohol or sex with our friends? Remember? Yeah. They weren't good friends. But we didn't know any better. You know, give us the benefit of the doubt. We just hung around with them because our parents let them, let us. But that's wrong. Y'all know better. You know better. So don't hang around. Don't hang around with ungodly people. And you don't allow your children to hang around ungodly people. That oftentimes includes some of your relatives. That's right. Hmm? There are plenty of horror, horror stories about that you all are, are well aware of. Don't, you know, don't, these are, these, these are children. These are children. Hmm? Uh, don't, don't expose them to those uh, that, uh, that you know are potentially dangerous. Amen. As a matter of fact, do everything you can uh, to keep your children under your watch. Hmm? As opposed to taking them here and taking them there. And, huh? You know, let this one watch them, that one watch them, this one watch them, that one watch them. Probably not a good idea. Right. Probably not a good idea, you know, without being absolutely pointed. Uh, P3. P number three uh, really has to do with discipline, communication, and probably you're ready for this last one, fun. Well, you know, you can have fun if you do everything else right. That's right. You surely can. You can have fun. 
But discipline, discipline needs to be God's way. Discipline's not something you do in anger. Discipline is just as important as love and affection. It's just as important as uh, uh, communicating with them and spending time with them. It's important that you understand that uh, every one of us requires discipline uh, in order to live a life that uh, is in order and is done decently and will please God and will make our future better. But it takes discipline. I mean, look at us. Some of us, some of us would probably not have been as crazy as we were as long as we were if we'd had parents that actually disciplined us, huh? Honestly. You know, my parents never disciplined me. My mom just cried. That's all she did. And dad, he just, he was out. You know, he was just, you know, I mean, he was from that standpoint, he was absentee. So you've got to discipline your children. You've got to discipline them. You've got to, uh, if, if they're little bitty guys, you know, uh, you, need to, you, need to, uh, you need to use their little butt cheeks to get their attention because their little butt cheeks are connected with their heart. And the Bible says that the rod of correction drives rebellion out of the heart of the child. Mm -hmm. No, we don't beat them within an inch of their life. We don't hit them upside the head. We don't slap them. We use a, we use a rod of correction. That's what the Bible tells us to use. I, I know all of the psychologists and the psychiatrists and all those people have come against that. I know we've got, uh, we've got uh, organizations now that if they hear about a child uh, being spanked or something, you know, they'll be at your front door. But let me tell you something. If you do it right, huh? If you do it right, the only ones that will know that it took place will be you and your spouse, if you're not single, and the child. Because when it's done right, it will mean as much to them as you sitting in the floor playing a game with them. Because they will begin to realize very quickly that your desire is for them to be blessed. And that means you have to be willing, you have to be willing to discipline them. You got to say something about that because you were the best disciplinarian in our house. Yeah, I was. <laughs> I hadn't got all, I hadn't got rid of all my jerk yet, so I was, I was working on my jerk at the time. Yeah. What about communication? Communication is so vital. You've got to talk to your kids. You've got to oh. talk to your kids. You've got to get in their head, and that. That comes by asking not uh, yes or no questions <laughs> and <laughs> yeah, interrogating open them. Ask open-end questions and, and really find out, find out what they're dealing with at school. Find out what the kids are saying to them. You know, when, when we were at the house and the kids were little, you know, I don't have a quick response when people say something. You know, I, I don't go there. I mean, I don't even think of that. I think, oh, yeah, I am fat. But then, you know, we would ask Pastor Dean, well, what would you say? Because he has a quick response. And he would, he would tell them what to say. So you need to help your kids figure out what to say when people make fun of them because they're going to do that. But you have to ask them what's going on. How, how are things going? You know, you have to communicate with your kids. This is so important. This is one thing that the summer internship the, the teenager said, I would like to communicate more with my parents. Yeah. But I want to read these uh, five things that um, I found in a book. These are the teenager's top five complaints about their parents. Oh, wonderful. Number one, they don't understand the world I live in every day. See, that's your job, to understand the world they live in, to find out what is the world they live in? I'll what, what are the pressures? We don't want to live in that world. I mean, we need to know what it is. Yes. Because I'll tell you, we, you don't want to be in the world they're in. I, the world is not the same for your teenager as it was when you were a teenager. Yes. Even if that was, you know, even if you're um, 30 and they're 15, you know, it changed. So number two is they never listen. They never listen. Number three is, all they care about is whether I do my chores on time and keep my room clean. Say amen or oh me. Number four, dad's never around. Sure dad's, I. you got to get involved with your little girls. Yes, you better. You got to have time, spend will. time with them or the first little boy that comes along. Yeah. 
Number five, mom's too busy to talk. Mom's too busy to talk. So you have to practice. You have to practice communication. And communication that encourages your children. You know, look at the good things that they have done. Don't always criticize. And, and cause that to be in your, in your family with yeah. brothers and sisters. Let's not criticize all the time. Let's not criticize. You know, have a family night where you do lots of fun things. Because then their guard is down. And they'll talk to you when you're doing something else. So that's a good time. Um, to get them to communicate. Develop in your home a no-strife zone. Like, we're not going to have strife, we're not going to have drama. If there's an issue, we're going to stay up all night if need be, yeah. and we're going to get this settled so that you're okay, we're okay, and everybody is okay, and we can go to sleep. These are the things that require a little bit of your time. But just like Pastor Dean said, you're the one that had unprotected sex. So they're your responsibility. So you got to put in the time. you got to put in the investment for your kids. They want to talk to you. They want to discuss things with you. But when, if they say something to you and you just, oh, really? And get all weird, then they're not going to talk to you ever again. You know, that's, that's You stupid. did what? Yeah. Another thing that you really have to understand is that every one of your children, and they're all different, they have gifts and talents, and they have value. Amen. And you can't prefer one over the other. You can't have favorites. That's a horrible way to live. I lived in that atmosphere all my life. It's a horrible way to live, so yeah. don't, don't do that. The next one is what about fun? Now, this is really, really something that you need to work on if you're a melancholy. I had to work on it because I'm not a fun person. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think along those lines. I don't think fun things. Um, but Pastor Dean is a fun person. He's a funny person. You know, now you've got, ladies, you've got Pinterest. You've got things that will help you be fun. But I allowed the Holy Spirit to help me, to help me be fun. Because you can't be boring all the time. Do you understand? You want your home to be a happy home, a fun home, so that all your little friends, God children, uh, God friends will want to come and stay at your house and, and visit. So you have to do some things. Make their birthdays special. You know, celebrate them. Different holidays, celebrate them. You know, Easter. When I was living at home, when I was growing up, my mother always, always. She was a party animal for we that stuff. We had an stuff, Easter yeah. party. We had cupcakes. White cupcakes Praise with green uh, coconut dyed icing with, with jelly beans on top. You want to try some more of those for my birthday? She would call me. <laughs> she would call I guess me that's when, a no. I, when I had my girls. She would call me and say, did you make the cupcakes for your girls for Easter? I mean, we celebrated Valentine's. We had a Hawaiian punch. We had red cookies. Celebrated I Friday. Mean, Yes, anything. You know, back to school. We have a celebration. Why do you think our girls have all these celebrations? Oh, my god! Because gosh. they were raised having these celebrations. That's right. But Honestly. it makes life fun and develop some, some uh, family traditions. You know, open, open your presents on Christmas Eve or go look at the lights on Christmas. Just whatever. But you be created. The Holy Spirit will help you. You want to have fun with your kids. Melancholies, they're too serious. They need to lighten up and have fun. So that's what you need to do. Play, have family nights, play board games together, have tickle parties. I mean, these are the things that your kids are going to remember. That you spent time with them. You spent time with them and you enjoyed them. And then they're going to do the same thing with their kids, should Jesus tarry. <laughs> I can assure you, we never played board games at my house. We never had tickle parties. We, ne we never had any kind of party. I mean, my parents... Boring. Boring is right. I mean, my dad coached me in athletics as a, as a young child and as a, a middle school kid, but nothing else. There wasn't anything at the house whatsoever. So none of this, none of this was I used to. And so when PK started putting this stuff together and, you know, I'm in the floor playing Mall Madness and, uh, 
and all kinds of board games and stuff with the girls. And honestly, and then, then when the, the, the Mario deal, what was the little Mario? Was that the, what was it? Nintendo. Was it, was that the one that were the little racing thing? Yeah. Yeah, that. Whatever, you Whatever. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and both the girls would beat me at it. So I don't, these, day, these today, whether, where they come around the corner and shoot and kill somebody, I mean, I wouldn't be good with that at all, you know? But, I mean, the cart thing, I did pretty good, but they, you know, they beat me. They beat me all, they beat me all the time, you know? But we played that, and, you know, just, uh, uh, gosh, we're not special. We're not special. We're just fortunate that something was triggered on the inside of us that uh, we were so grateful to have those children. And, uh, I mean, and listen, they were not always a blast. I mean, they're wonderful girls and everything, but holy Toledo, you know? I mean, foot. I mean, there was a lot of stuff that you don't, you know, that you got to deal with. Just even good kids. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, you just get to the point where you just want to, you know, scream. But, you know, those are gifts from God. And this was before we were pastors, you know. You know, we got, we got rolling on this deal when we were just, you know, uh, learning to love God ourselves and realized how blessed we were to have these kids. And, and honestly, there's not enough time left, I don't believe, for you to be concerned about anything any more than yourself and your spouse if you're married and your children if you have them. That needs to be your priority, is that you find yourself in a good place, loving God with all your heart, figuring out how in the flip to do that. Work overtime if you have to to figure that out. And if you're married, you know, be honest with one another. Quit BSing one another. Huh? Quit being afraid of making it without a man or without a woman. Learn how to love God and trust God. And then as a couple, learn how to do it together. Yeah, let me tell you what it's going to be when you start. Awkward. It's going to be awkward. Because serving God, honoring His Word, is totally different than the way most of us were raised and the way most of us have lived even since we've known Him. So it's going to be a little bit awkward. But you know, it's just you two. Just be awkward. And, you know, and just put up with one another where you are and just make a determination. We're going to communicate and we're going to make this thing work. And we're going to make it work because not only are we valuable to the Father and does He love us as much as He loves Jesus, but He loves our children yes. as much as He loves Jesus. Yes. And when we put ourselves in that position where we understand what our place is, then we begin to recognize those children Amen. And should the Lord Jesus tarry, which he could, we don't have any idea. I mean, the times look pretty, pretty, pretty close. But we want those children to be strong in him. Huh? We don't want them to struggle with stuff like we did in our teen years or even in our middle school years like I did. We don't want that. Or like some of you did. Hmm? And got involved in some of the things that some of you did. And set the course of your destiny way before the course of your destiny need to be, needed to be set. We don't want, you don't want that for your children, do you? No. Well, then you've got to do something about it. You've got to do something about it. One of the things I want to make sure you do every day is pray for your kids. Amen. Pray and for you, your pray kids. Pray for you. Before they leave the house, before they leave the house, yes. you plead the blood of Jesus over them. You commission the angels to encamp round about them Amen. and protect them from all harm. You believe in the protection of Psalm 91, the blood of Jesus and the angels of God. And do that to your house also. And do yes. it to yourselves. I mean, those of you who are oil field and driving on these highways oh every my gosh. day. 
you need to plead the blood of Jesus Amen. over you. Read Psalm 91 every single day before you leave the house. God is for you. He wants the best for you. And he's given us all the tools to be the best parent and, and to have the best kids. But we got to apply it to our life. we got to do it. You know, we love you very much. And uh, we, we've said this before when we've talked along these lines. Uh, you, you may have to, you may have to uh, uh, apologize to your children. Uh, regardless of their age. You may have to apologize to them because, you know, you begin to make changes. And uh, when you make the changes, you need to, you need to do it uh, uh, in a way where it's, it, it's not gradual a long time, but it is gradual. You're, you're, not, you're, not, you're not drawing a line, and you're not willing to stay on the right side of the line yourself. And you, you, need, to let them, you need to let them know, you know, kids, we're going in a different direction. You know, especially if they're older, they're teens or some say, hey, listen, you know, uh, I didn't do this right. You know, I, I'm, I'm convicted. I'm going to do this right. I'm going to do this right. I want you to have the very best life. And it's going to be a whole lot easier on both of us or the three of us or whatever it is if you'll just cooperate. Amen. And uh, I know that there's pressure, you know, to do things the world's way, uh, but we're going we're gonna to make some changes. We're going to talk about it. The things that need to be changed, we're going to talk about it. You need to do that. You need to be willing to do that. We love you. We'll help you. We got all kinds of tools to do that. We got all kinds of tools to do that. But the thing is that we can't do that. We can't do the thing that only you can do, and that's make a decision to do it, to do it right. And uh, um, you know, sometimes we know it's the right thing to do, but it, it, we just can't seem to, can't seem to step over that line. Well, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you from somebody from with experience. It's worth stepping over that line. Amen. It's worth stepping over that line. And I can assure you, most, most pastors don't ever experience the success that we have. Most of them don't. Because when you step over the line, you keep going. You keep going, and you don't turn back. You don't turn to the right or the left. This is not a pastor thing. Hmm? This is a child of God thing. You make that decision. Father, in Jesus' name.